Havana Cigar Club, located in Warwick, Rhode Island, is a great place to enjoy a drink and a cigar. Stogie Geeks listeners can find a $5 off coupon on our website by clicking the HCC logo. M. Bombay Cigars represent the most admired cigar culture of Cuba. They select the best of the best quality tobacco to use in the aging process. M. Bombay Cigars are then rolled in Costa Rica by some of the most experienced cigar rollers, giving it a unique smoking experience. The band portrays the detailed and artistic nature of our small industry. Try the M. Bombay Casera, M. Bombay Mora, and the recently released M. Bombay Habano. M. Bombay Cigars, where the cigar is a way of life. Cigar connoisseurs are already raving about this exquisite cigar, which pays homage to Christopher Columbus's discovery of tobacco during his expedition of the New World. This medium to full-bodied cigar shows off the kind of exquisite construction expected by master blender A.J. Fernandez. This gorgeous box press cigar features a delicious dark chocolate Nicaraguan wrapper that houses a blend of Ometepe, Condega, and Esteli filler, bound with a Jalapa binder. Once lit, the perfectly balanced and refined New World gives off a beautiful billow of smoke and hits you with spice and citrus flavors. As you begin to lose yourself in the rich aromas of the New World, flavors become more complex and begin to express hints of hazelnut and coffee. The New World is a first-time collaboration between A.J. Fernandez and his father Ishmael, making this cigar stand out in the A.J. Fernandez line. To commemorate the union of father and son, A.J. Fernandez is offering you this masterpiece at an MSRP of $6, unheard of for a cigar of this caliber. A.J. Fernandez invites you to embark on the journey and smoke what he guarantees to be one of the most talked about cigars of the year. The New World, Cigar Journal's number one cigar of the year. Duran Premium Cigars, one of the fastest growing boutique cigar companies, providing smokers a portal into the old Cuban tradition of perfect balance and the lost art of progressive flavor construction. Roberto Palayo Duran began his career in tobacco over two decades ago in Havana, where his reputation grew within Cuban circles. The creation of Duran Premium Cigars has given Roberto the platform to introduce a series of cigars that offer the same quality, construction, and detail which he perfected while in Cuba. Brands include the Ultra Premium Roberto P. Duran Premium Cigar Series, Azan Cigars, Naya, and Baracoa. Duran Cigars uses a seed to humidor approach as all tobacco is grown on their farms and rolled in their factory in Esteli, Nicaragua. Rollers have been carefully chosen to carry out Roberto's precise method to ensure the progressive flavor in each cigar. Duran Cigars invites you to make their premium your standard. Welcome back everyone to the Stogie Geek Show. My co-host this evening is none other then Dave Burke from the Cigar Jukebox Podcast, broadcasting all the way from Australia. Dave, thanks for joining us tonight. Thanks for having me on. It's great. Love to talk cigars and have one. So it's good. Absolutely. I want to remind everyone to go to facebook.com forward slash stogie geeks. That's right. You can view and read about all of the cigar reviews, all of the segments on the Stogie Geeks by following us on Facebook, facebook.com forward slash Stogie Geeks. And every once in a while, I throw in some silly posts as well. Usually once or twice a week, I like to throw in, you know, some silly posts in there. So it's definitely uh, entertaining. Um, I try and do it every Thursday, maybe not every Thursday, but two or three times a month. I do a Stoey Geeks throwback on Facebook, especially for our Facebook followers. And this week, I talked about the iconic and legendary episode 75, which is legendary for a couple of reasons. One, it is the episode titled Wet Spot in My Shorts. And that, of course, you know, comes from Stogie Santa. Uh, who described uh, a cigar review and gave it a rating of Wet Spot in my shorts. Uh, I actually posted that to my, my Facebook page today, Dave, my personal page, and I said I, I wanted to post this just so I could say, hey, everyone should check out the Wet Spot in my shorts episode that we did. <laughs> it's just, just classic. Also in that episode, we interviewed Pete Johnson from Tatawahe Cigars, so you can go uh, check out that interview again, which is uh, always fun and entertaining to, uh, to interview Pete, which is a, a great opportunity, uh, and it was wonderful. So Facebook.com forward slash Stoey Geeks. Please go there. Dave, how is your cigar doing, your Sombre Mesa? I think you finished that one, right? 
I did. Uh, I love that cigar, and I'll talk about it in the stories of the week as well. But I've moved on to number two, which uh, I'll put up there. Oh, oh, there we go. This is the Jericho Hill. It's a shot. So these are the Jericho Hill shots. It's a short um, Corona. Mm -hmm. This cigar is amazing. Nice. I haven't had that one. I'll have to try those out. Oh. I am uh, finishing up my La Flor Dominicana La Nox. This is their Brazilian wrapped San Andreas Mexican binder. And uh, let's see if we can get a shot of that. Yeah, the packaging is just awesome. Um, San Andreas Mexican binder, Dominican filler. And it is just an unbelievably awesome cigar. This, I have to say right now, Dave, I'm updating my rating because these have aged for another week or two in my humidor. I'm updating my rating on this one to fight Chuck Norris for him. I don't know what my original rating is on it, but this is wow. fight Chuck Norris, man. And this is well on its way to Oasis. This cigar oh, wow. is awesome. You get a great sweetness from the wrapper. Awesome change-ups in flavor. Um, I get this kind of woody, herbally note in the in the filler um, that just is a great complement to that the sweet wrapper and those flavors you get off the the Brazilian wrapper. It is just an absolutely. I, I am so impressed by this cigar, Dave. So impressed. What 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 size is that? Like what what? Um, it's a six by fifty-two Toro. I want right, to say. They come in other I don't know if it comes in other sizes. That's a great question. I want to say I've only no, seen it in the 6x52 Toro. That doesn't mean it doesn't come in other sizes. No, I'll have to check that out because, I mean, that kind of rating. I'm, I'm addicted to this cigar, dude. I, I, I totally, I mean, it was it was so good. So good. So what else have you been smoking, Dave? Well, I'll do the Sober Mesa because I've sort of been talking about it. But yeah. uh, I got to uh, consult my notes here. Um, so the Silver Mesa, that comes in a lot of Batolas. Um, this is the one, the, uh, Steve Sock has released since leaving Drew's estate. Um, he, uh, this is a partnership with Hoya de Nicaragua. That's the factory, uh, for this one. The one I was smoking, or the one that I have smoked this week is the, um, Corona Grande, which is a five and one fourth by 44. Mm -hmm. Which is a really good Vitola. I like that uh, Vitola. Wrapper is Ecuadorian Habano. The binder is a Negro de Temporal. And the filler is uh, Nicaraguan and U.S. Broadleaf. It, it's an incredible cigar. I mean, lots of depth. Um, you get rich coffee, rich tobacco flavors with a slight spice note. Um, I guess in comparing it to the Liga Privada, which was another, the other cigar that Steve is really well known for, it's a it's more nuanced than that. Like it's not as bold, but just tons of depth, rich, chewy. It has this sort of dark syrupy sweetness to it, like a dark kind of honey or cherry sort of flavor. Lots of body. Um, the strength isn't overpowering. It matches quite well. Um, I, for me, this is a, 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 a box purchase, an easy box purchase. And I think if you, if you lay it down for a while and give it some age, I think it'll go up to Chuck Norris. But just a very rich, deep, complex cigar. A, a unique experience. It's a really, really good cigar. Yeah, I can't, I can't wait to try those. Will was talking about the wrapper or the binder that he used on there was something he wasn't a big fan of and he found the right crop i think it, it goes back to some of the things that jorge was talking about of you know finding the right strain grown in the right conditions with the right curing and the right fermentation like that whole thing is an art and and steve is using a particular what was the wrapper of the binder i think it's the wrapper what's the wrapper on that cigar dude you know off the top of your head i don't remember i should but i don't remember no, the wrapper is the Ecuadorian uh, Habano wrapper. Yeah, I think that's what it was. Will was talking about in a previous episode. So, super yeah, no, excited. It's a, it, oh, it's a great cigar. I think he says to, he suggests they let it sit a little while after you get them. Mm -hmm. Um, but me, as soon as I got them, I just ripped it open and started smoking it. <laughs> and, Throwing and, caution to the wind. <laughs> and it was really good. So that's why. That's why I'm saying. I mean, it's a box purchase, you know, just straight up 
once you crack it open. Um, and if he's saying it's better after you sit it for a little while, like it right. would be Chuck Norris easy. Well, I'm I'm going to talk about an Oasis rated cigar. Dave, I don't know if you've uh, heard Will and I talk about this. Arturo Fuente Don Arturo Anniversario Destino Al Siglo de Amor. Wow. It's like the longest named cigar <laughs> in history. It, it is, I'll say it again. Arturo Fuente Don Arturo Anniversario Destino Al Siglo de Amor. It is a five and a quarter by 50 Perfecto. Okay. Now, I've smoked a couple of different sizes in this blend. This De Amor, or the Perfecto, is by far the bell of the ball. It has absolutely amazing flavors. Um, I definitely get some cinnamon notes from this blend, and it's definitely apparent in this particular Vitola. And all we know about it is it, it's Dominican. That's really all we know. We don't know much else. The Fuentes have done an absolutely fantastic job with this blend. Um, they can retail anywhere from around $16 to $26. Um, we, Will and I actually just split a box of these. Um, we you know, we kind of put our, our money where our mouth is after we talked about them on a preview. We smoked this, I think, on the last, last week on the show and we have since got a box of them. This is an Oasis-rated cigar, hands down. It has all of those components of balance, complexity, flavor, the smoking experience. You know, all of those different categories and taste are just, you know, like A+, plus, like off the charts. And those are a lot of the factors that just contribute to the Oasis rating. If you can find these cigars, I strongly recommend that you buy some, as many as you can. Um, it, it can be difficult to find a box. So when Will found it at a, a retail shop, he called me up. He's like, hey, they have a box. I'm like, well, they let you buy the whole thing? He's like, yeah. I'm like, let's split it. He's like, okay. That was literally how long it took us to make the decision <laughs> to purchase these cigars at $16 a piece. $16 is a lot of money, dude. Um, wow, yeah. But, and, and these are just worth every penny. I mean, they just they smoke awesome. They're just so wonderful. So wonderful. Wow, I have to keep my eye out. See, this is why I love Sodies of the Week. I get to hear about all these cigars and track them down. Yeah, this this is one of the one of the gems, man. Uh, it's just something special about that blend in that side. Now, I like I said, I have smoked other sizes. The Robusto is very good. The Robusto is probably a close second, dude. I mean, that's probably that's a fight Chuck Norris all day long. Um, the Robusto is very good in this blend. The Churchill is is okay. The Churchill's good. Um, in, in terms of this blend, you know, the Churchill might be box worthy to put it in perspective, right? But the day of more in that little perfecto is absolutely amazing. I like just as general, I like that Fatola as well. That's the that kind of short perfecto. Yes. Sort of, uh, I think Skip uses that with the mode fives and stuff. I like, I like that. Yes. A lot. Yeah. He's got a, a little, it's not as drastic of a perfecto, but he's definitely does it in that mode five. Um, the Fuentes were really, um, you know, when you look at that Hemingway line of perfectos, that's kind of like one of the staple perfecto lines uh, in the industry. So um, they, they make some awesome cigars in that size. So what else have you been smoking, Dave? Well, I've been trying to keep up on, like, what's new, really. Um, and Jorge touched on it. Um, I had the uh, Wawense, Nick uh, Melillo's cigar. And you had Nick on a couple episodes ago talking about this cigar. Yeah, and um, Nick, Nick yeah. was on the I, another iconic episode in Stoey Geek's history, um, was, which was the Ass Press yeah, episode right. when Nick was on. So you get a double whim. You get Nick's great knowledge and, um, you know, history behind his brand and his blend. Uh, and you get the probably the funniest outtake in Stogie Geek's history during that segment when Stogie Santa could not find his cigar and it turned out he was sitting on it. <laughs> I, I just have to say the common denominator with the uh, priceless moments is Stogie Santa and Scotch. Yes. Like that conversation. Yes. We just we bring him on the good. show. We feed him booze, and 
we get things like ass press cigars. Dude, when I need a good laugh, I just go back and I watch that like oh, two yeah. minute clip, dude. And it's just I, I hysterical laugh. You see me during that that sec, that oh. like bit, dude. Like I can't even hold it together. I'm like laughing like a giddy little schoolgirl. I can't even control oh. myself. I'm laughing so hard. Oh, it's funny. But well, I mean, well, to, t- to get back to that show now. I really want to try the cigar. The only Vitola I could find is usually a little big for me. It, it's the Toro Huaco, mm-hmm. which is a six six by fifty six. Um, the blend is the wrap. The wrapper is a Nicaraguan uh, Corojo ninety nine. Binder is Corojo ninety nine, and the filler is Corojo and Criollo from two thousand eleven and two thousand and twelve. And this this cigar was amazing. I. I was surprised because once you go six by fifty six, that's a bit big for me. Mm-hmm. Um, I usually like to smoke more of your like Lonsdales and like your um, Coronas and that sort of thing. But it starts off really rich, really sweet, nice spice, good tobacco flavors. Get a bit of cedar, a bit of coffee. What what I what I was really impressed with is that it's very smooth, very subtle, not as bold as I thought it was going to be. And extremely well balanced. Yes. And for a big for a big cigar, it smoked really, really well. The draw was great. The pace was great. It's a fantastic cigar. Um, very nuanced. I was really impressed with it. I mean, I would I say um, I I would go a box. I I put it as box worthy. Um, and I would get a box of these. I haven't had the other Vitolas, but I would buy a box of this in a second and, and just really, 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 really well nuanced and, and really well balanced. I thought your description of the blend was spot on, Dave. Um, I've smoked a few of the different sizes in the way Wednesday and I like the Churchill the best, which is interesting because I don't normally gravitate towards the Churchill. The Churchill in that blend is amazing. It's amazing. Yeah, and I think um, and it's interesting to hear you say that because I don't like Churchill's either. Because I find either I find the best part of the Churchill is sort of that that second third. Yeah. The sort of the first third kind of you kind of warm up to the second, and then a lot of Churchills run out of gas by the time you get to the third. Um, with this with this Toro, even though it's so big, you don't get any build up. Like every it doesn't plug, and you get complexity all the way through. Like with some Toros. I find that last third, you kind of have one dominant flavor that sort of steamrolls everything. But with this one, it's nuance and complexity all the way. So great, great cigar. So be on the lookout um, for that one. So I went back and I, I revisited the Drew Estate uh, Undercrown Shade Grand Toro. Um, and I'll talk about a couple of different uh, Drew Estate cigars in this episode because um, I smoked a, a lot of stuff. Uh, in, in the past week, but I came back to a couple of different Drew Estate cigars, mostly because they really surprised me. Uh, you know, I had tried some of these in the past, and I, I did try the the Underground Shade, and it, I I wasn't re- I mean, I thought it was good, but I thought I could use a little time. And they sent those sample packs to a lot of the cigar media. I was lucky enough to get one, and it, it had uh, actually four of the Underground Shades, two Toros and two Robustos inside of the sample pack. And I let the sample pack sit for a week, week and a half maybe before I, I smoked this cigar. Um, so I let it rest for a little while. Um, but I, I had to go back and try this because I, I recognize potential in the blend. And this blend is uh, an Ecuadorian Connecticut wrapper with a Sumatran binder and three different fillers, Dominican Criollo 98, Nicaraguan Criollo, and Nicaraguan Corojo. So, uh, you know, ha- that filler is, makes it, I think, very interesting. The Nicaraguan tobacco, uh, in my opinion, not to say Dominican tobacco can't be this either, but, it's a, you know, it's a little bold for a Connecticut, and that's a delicate balance to play. However, in this Vitola, it totally worked. A little time for this cigar to settle down did it wonders, and I really, really liked it. I really like the Undercrown shade. Um, so much so this Toro is a box split for me. I think that's going to get better. I think those filler tobaccos are really going to meld together nicely. It had that little kind of a bold punch, but that kind of smooth and creaminess you know, was a nice complement 
to those filler tobaccos, uh, and the cigar really worked. Um, I'd call it a little bit of an amped up Connecticut, but one that really works. I think there are some that take it way too far. This is not it. This is a well-balanced cigar that I would definitely do a box split of to have to smoke in the morning. I, I'm going to have to do that because I had that cigar, and I had the same feeling as you did. And it's interesting, and I was excited to hear what you thought because um, when you I, uh, Paul came on Cigar Jukebox a while ago and did we did an episode on Connecticut's, and with that Connecticut, it's, I found it similar to the My Father, and I don't – what what – got me and what sort of turned me off a little bit was it kind of didn't know if it wanted to be a Nicaraguan or a Connecticut it was sort of I found at times you get a creaminess you're like okay I know where this is going and then you'd smoke a little bit more and then the spice would come and overrun everything and it seemed a bit a bit confused Um, but I think the Toro the Toro size Dave I think kind of levels it out right the Robusto the Robusto is definitely more concentrated this Toro yep. size was definitely more leveled out and a lot more enjoyable, hence the, the much higher rating. And, and you're saying, you know, letting it sit, you sort of, it sort of uh, blends out a bit better. It does, yeah. It, it definitely evened out, and uh, those two flavors definitely complemented each other, and I think that was a little bit of age, just letting that tobacco, you know, settle down a bit. So um, great Connecticut offering from, from Jewish. And I, I had really high hopes when we interviewed Jonathan – you know, he released that they were coming out with a Connecticut and I had really high hopes for it um, cause, because they make so many great cigars. Um, and I was interesting to see what they would do with a Connecticut, primarily because I think a lot of it, my impression was, it was my hopes were so high because the, their flavored cigars um, are actually very well balanced in terms of strength and body and, and flavors even. Um, and you may not like infused cigars, but I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to talk about a bunch of ones that I, that I smoke from there. Probably review them all in one shot uh, in just a bit. So I was really hopeful for what they would do with the Connecticut. And I think this one is going to work a little better in some of those larger larger ring gauges. Which is weird. Size matters, dude. And I, I talked about this before on the show. You can't dismiss a brand. You can't dismiss a line because you didn't like one size. You have to go and sample the different sizes to find the one that you like. And, you know, this is one I think works better for me in the Toro size. No, I mean, hearing you say that, I'll have to, because that's actually a cigar I can get here in Australia, oddly mm. enough. Um, so I'll have, to, I'll have to revisit that and pick up that Toro and maybe sit it for a little while and try that again. Give it, give it another go. Absolutely. What else you got, Dave? Uh, I got, I was so excited to smoke this cigar. When I got it in the mail, I almost didn't smoke it. I almost just ate it mm. because I was so excited for this cigar. It is the Viaje Skull and Bones 10-ton Tess, which is the um, new Skull and Bones for 2015. Um, this is a project between Viaje and Abe Flores from PDR. Yep. Uh, they sell it in jars. I think there's a black jar and a white jar. And I think they're going to be putting out like a gold jar, I think, in the future. But anyway, uh, Sold in Jars released um, at IPCPR this year. Uh, they named it after the bomb dropped by the British Air Force in World War II, the 10 ton Tess. Mm-hmm. Um, comes in one Vitola, 6x54 Toro. The wrapper is a, San, a Mexican San Andreas, and I love that wrapper, so I was very excited about that. Binder is Dominican. Filler is a combination of U.S., Brazilian, and Dominican. And as a side note, it's interesting to see how much Brazilian tobacco is sort of making its way back in cigars, which is interesting. Um, I, I lit this up. Big spice hit up front. Really rich and chewy. Uh, you get cocoa, coffee, sweetness. Um, I mean, you get the flavors you sort of expect from a San Andreas wrapper. Really complex. I love the body of this cigar. What's like, the size on that again, Dave? It's a six by fifty-four. Okay. Um, and and I love the body on it. It very deep, gives the cigar a lot of structure. Um, smokes really well. Great sweetness to it. Delivers complexity all the way to the end. The only it reminded me a little bit. Have you ever had the Luchador? From Sam um, Lissia. I think I have, yes. It, it reminds me a lot of that, um, except a bit more. It's like the Luchador, but 
if the luchador just took a bunch of steroids, mm-hmm. essentially. <laughs> um, but I think I, I put it as a box split. And the only reason, even though I love the cigar, is I think that for some people it might be too full bodied because it, it does sit on your palate a bit heavy because it's, it's almost like, I mean, I mean, it's almost like you're, 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 you know, just eating the, a loaf of bread, really. Like it, it's a lot of body, but it is really, really good. So if you love that sort of full body cigar, I mean, you could probably rip through a box of these pretty easy. Um, I put it as a box split just because it is so heavy. Um, I would probably smoke it every now and then, um, as opposed to having it part of like a, 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 daily rotation yeah no i agree yeah a lot of the skull and bones fall in that category for me too dave they're very very full in body you know hence the name and the branding behind it um Mm. they're all slightly different blends and uh i like to go back to them uh as they age and see how they're doing and uh you know a lot of because they're so full body they have great aging potential and uh, it's just a really great series it's a lot of fun to smoke all the different ones Oh yeah, that it, it it's it was it was really good. It really it lived up to the hype, I guess, because I've been looking forward to this cigar for a while, and it, and it, and it delivered in spades. Great cigar. Um, I'm I'm gonna talk about something a little little different. I don't normally smoke infused cigars. A lot of the uh, stoey geeks out there um, probably don't smoke a lot of infused cigars. Um, you know, having kind of started to embark on this journey because, you know, Will and I were talking and we both got the, the, the pack from Drew Estate and they included their infused cigars. There was no acids in there, but there was um, tobacco special and there was the natural, Drew Estate natural in there. And, um, you know, we used to, we we're going to smoke them and review them like we do every other cigar. And um, I hadn't, you know, I think I smoked these a long time ago um, and it was nice to smoke them again. Um, cutting to the chase, the clear winner for me is the Tobacco Special in the Negro. The, this is a uh, Connecticut broadleaf wrapper with a Sumatra binder, Nicaraguan Criollo shade, and sun-grown fillers. Um, so it's a premium cigar, like, you know, same, you know, types of wrappers and binders and fillers as you would find in all the other cigars we review. But it's co- this one is coffee-infused. The coffee infusion is not overpowering. It's pretty subtle in this cigar. I mean, you can definitely tell it's there, and you can tell it's an infused cigar. But it's an extremely enjoyable cigar to smoke. I love this cigar as a change of pace. And I love to drink coffee all day long, basically. I make a pot of coffee, and I, like, I drink the entire pot of coffee throughout the day. <laughs> it's kind of how I roll. Um, and to have this cigar in the morning with coffee was, was a real treat, right? Because those coffee flavors just melded together. I mean, sometimes you just you go with, like, what you think might work. Like, I'm going to pair a coffee-infused cigar with coffee because they're going to complement each other, right? I'm not going to try and pair that with anything else. Um, and this was an I, – I would pair this with a, you know, coffee-infused martini um, or any kind of other coffee drink late, late at night as well. I, I thought it was a really great cigar, and I, and I smoked uh, a bunch of the different infused ones. In fact, the Tobacco Special Negra that I smoked and reviewed, and the one that I liked the best, I got the best flavor out of, um, was the soft press that they sent us. And this soft press size, do I have the size here? It's, it's like a Toro size, 6 by 52 roughly, I want to say. That could be wrong, though. Um, it's an exclusive to Corona Cigar. So it's an exclusive for the Drew Estate Lounge uh, at Corona Cigar. And um, it is kind of, it looks like the shape is like an oval. So it's a soft press like you would find in the San Latano oval. Very similar in shape. And I, I thought it was really, it was so good. In fact, I picked up a couple of other uh, of the tobacco special negras from uh, a local shop to try some of those different sizes as well, and I enjoyed those as well. This soft press size is really cool. It's really awesome. You get awesome, awesome flavors uh, from this. It's very, very well balanced. You get the 
tobacco experience, but you get a little bit of the coffee in with it too, and they just they marry very well together naturally. And um, this is one of my favorite infused cigars, and I would definitely work this into my rotation. I would call this one a box split. I think it'd be interesting to see how the cigar ages. Um, it'll come down in intensity, and it, you know some of the coffee flavors might might not be as intense, but I think it's a great. Uh, a great thing to have in your humidor, a great thing to give to a new cigar smoker because it really, they don't have to try really hard to get that coffee flavor. It's not like a, a coffee flavor you get from a regular non-infused cigar. It's a, it's a prominent flavor for, um, you know, your uh, new cigar smokers. I really liked it, dude. And, you know, to kind of build on that, I did try it. They make it in a natural wrapper. I thought that was good. I prefer the Connecticut Broadleaf Wrapped uh, in this blend. I also tried the Natural, uh, Drew Estate Natural. They also make it in this that soft press, uh, score. I don't know if it's a soft press or a square press, but the, they sent me the Natural. I smoked that one too. That one is really, really sweet. If you've got someone that really likes those sweet desserts and has a sweet tooth, they're going to love the Drew Estate uh, Natural. It's very, very, it was too sweet for my palate, but it's very good. Very good cigar, especially for those people who like uh, the dessert type flavor. So I'm really, I'm enjoying kind of, you know, I haven't smoked in a few cigar in, in, in quite some time. And I was glad that I tried it. Yeah, I had, um, I've had some Drew Estate infused as well. And I agree with you. You're saying I find the coffee infused um, better experiences. Uh, mm -hmm. I don't know if it's because that flavor is... I find it more dialed back, I guess, than yes, the, the sweet it is. infused ones. Um, and what I like about the, the coffee infused ones is they leave room for the tobacco flavor to come out. Um, yes. And I guess the one problem I had, I'd be interested to hear what you say about that. The one, the, the issue I have with the flavor infused is when you get to the final third and it's sort of that infused flavors sort of, it has a real sort of artificial feel to it. And I have a hard time with the final third of those cigars, but the coffee infused I find uh, perform better than the the sweet infused. Yeah, I didn't I didn't notice any problems in the final third. Um, it definitely changes, and I, I I think it, you know, the tobacco gets a lot more richer in that final third, and the infusion definitely changes in that final third. But I'll have to smoke some more. I'm, I'm going to smoke more of them. I mean, this is going to be in my regular rotation to have with coffee. It's a nice. Um, kind of palate cleansing, I think, experience to uh, to reach for the coffee infused, uh, you know, in the morning. Kind of a break from some of the Connecticut, some of the Cameroons that I might I might smoke in the morning. Um, it's a definite uh, nice change of pace for me. Oh, good. Not my my next cigar. I would not characterize as a good change of pace, <laughs> but I'm I'll be interested to hear what you if you've had this cigar and what you think. Um, I had the Tierra Volcan, the Fino, which is a six by 44, um, Tierra Volcan. It's from Mombato. Mm -hmm. It's a, it, the company that has a headquarters in Toronto, Canada. Yep. Yeah. Um, I've had, uh, I've had their cigars before, Dave. I haven't had this size. Yeah. Well, it's, a, the size is new. Um, I think the size has been released this year, uh, but the other Vitolas have been around for a couple of years, I think. Um, Wrapper is a Nicaraguan sun-grown Habano. The binder is a Nicaraguan uh, Habano Criollo. And the filler is Nicaraguan tobacco from Jalapa and Condega. Uh, I found I lit it up. Um, it starts off, got some chocolate, earth, some hints of spice, lots of body. Um, then came this sort of, I called it more of like a mushroom flavor. But some people have described it as sort of like a sour taste, mm -hmm. um, like a sour cream sort of thing. Uh, I got more of like a mushroom that I think worked really well with the coffee and the earth flavors. We're working well. It, it's a very deep, earthy cigar. I really liked it. The draw was great. First and second thirds, I'm loving it. Great cigar. And then the final third, um, which I had, a pro it, it, I had problems with. I found that I fought with the final third a bit and that kind of sour note overtook everything. It was a bit too dominant and sort of threw off the other flavors in the first and second thirds I was really enjoying. Um, 
I would say for people, I put it as a try one because some people love this cigar and it could be that it may need to sit for a little bit or it could be just that Fatola. And if I tried, you know, a Robusto or a Toro, I'd have a different experience. Um, I found that final third a bit difficult, but like I said, I think people should give it a go. I'll give it another go at a different Fatola uh, and see if it performs differently. But um, yeah, I'm interested to hear what you think of uh, of that cigar. Yeah, no, I I agree with your assessment. Um, I had some different experiences. Uh, I found that uh, those cigars to be very earthy, and the earth is the prominent flavor. And for me, when you know, there's different kinds of like earth flavors. I just find that one to be too earthy for my palate. Um, I don't like that real earth flavor. I think it's a nice compliment. Um, but it has that like really dirty, earthy component yeah. to it. And it's, like I, a, it's like a soil flavor almost. Yeah. Like a, yeah. Like you're out in the garden sort of sort of vibe to it. Yeah. It's like if you when you're digging in the garden and you smell that fresh dirt, like that's the I mean, it, it, that's not always bad, right? Uh, and I think to some people that it could be a pleasant thing, and to other people, for me, it's just too overpowering. Um, I hear you in the final third, though. Some of the shorter Robustos they have, which is one of my favorite Vitola sizes, uh, favorite Vitolas is the you know the short Robusto, um, is you get that sourness really early on in those shorter sizes. And I, I did get that sourness in the, in the final third. And, and sour is definitely the flavor that, that you, you get from that. And not to say sour is necessarily always a bad thing, but you know to have that earth component I'm not a big fan of and have that that sour component. I, I would list some of the ones that I, I smoked as a try one. Some are better than other. You know, there are other sizes that I think I like better that balance off that earth with a little more, you know, coffee and chocolate notes, um, which are more enjoyable. Uh, you can find some of my reviews on these cigars uh, in, in previous Stogie Geeks history in our Stogie's feed. But, yeah, I, I would tend to agree with your assessment, Dave. Uh, the last one that I had on my list, and I, f I feel like I should have another one, but I only have one left, uh, comes from Tarazona Cigars. This is the XTC Torpedo. It's a Nicaraguan sun-grown Corojo wrapper, a uh, Nicaraguan binder, and a Nicaraguan filler. This was a, a very tasty medium-bodied cigar. I mean, for uh, torpedoes aren't always, you know, my favorite size. This one smoked awesome, and it had... That great coupling of a little bit of herbal notes, a little bit of wood notes, and, you know, great flavor from the wrapper. It was a good, well-balanced cigar. I believe these are very reasonably priced as well. And it was a great medium-bodied smoke. Um, I really enjoyed it, and I rated it a fiver. Nice. Yeah, I think I've heard of that cigar. I'm going to have to check it out. Yeah, it, it's definitely one you want to try, Dave. Um, like I said, it, it, it surprised me. I haven't smoked a lot of the Terrazona cigars, um, but it, it's a strong offering from them uh, because it's medium-bodied and, and very well-balanced, and it does a great job, you know, presenting the, those flavors. So, Cool. You got any more, Dave? I am done. Well, that was fun, Dave. I want to um, thank you for, uh, for helping us out. Uh, of course, in, in Will's absence this week, um, we'll be back next week. I'm not sure who the guest is <clears throat> for next week, um, but we do have a guest for next week. Uh, I want to thank our guest for this evening, Jorge. Let's make sure I say his last name right. Armenteros, <laughs> Jorge Armenteros from Tobacconist University. Again, I want to encourage people to go to Tobacconist University and um, sign up. Get your uh, certified consumer tobacconist certification. Get your CRA, uh, if you don't already have it, all in one shot. Order those R&D kits. I'm going to be ordering some of those R&D kits and reviewing them on the show, which I think is going to be a great experience. So um, we do have a contest for this hey. evening. We do have a contest. Do we have something to give away? It's Fred Rui next week. Oh, Fred. Fred's the man. He's a fellow Wisconsin guy, man. Fred is crazy, dude. Do you follow Fred on Facebook? Fred's the best follow on Facebook and Twitter. He's the oh, best. He is, his Facebook page is 
epic. He posts the, the best stuff on Facebook, dude. You have to follow him on Facebook and make sure you check out our um, interview with him next week. And we do have a prize pack to give away. I'm going to say the prize pack is going to go to whoever can prove that they have uh, successfully completed their tobacconist. Uh, I'll take the PDR cigar box, yeah. It's wonderful PDR cigars. Thank you, Nick. Comes with oh, an nice. ashtray and a line sampling of PDR cigars. So if you oh, can nice. prove to me that you've signed up for Tobacconist University and gotten your Tobacconist University Certified Consumer Tobacconist Certification, we will send you a five-pack of PDR Robustos. This is the uh, Capo Maduro, Sun Grown, Small Batch Release, the Connecticut, and the Capo Oscura. I like the Oscura. Uh, I'm really big on the Oscura. It's very, very good. Uh, and an ashtray. We will send you this if you can send us proof that you have uh, achieved, recently achieved, your Certified Consumer Tobacconist Certification. And I highly recommend the Tobacconist Handbook. Go buy that book as well. It's awesome. Be a true stogie geek. And that concludes. Dave, again, thank you very much. That concludes. Thank you, Paul, for having me on. Yes, anytime, Dave. And thank you all for listening and watching. And we'll see everyone next week. Thanks, everyone, for watching.